The Deceptive Trade Practices Act is a very important piece of consumer protection legislation here in the state of Texas. It's known as the DTPA, and it is found in the Texas Business and Commerce Code. Now, as I said, it's, it's a very important piece of consumer protection legislation, very, very powerful, provides a lot of benefits for consumers that they wouldn't otherwise have. It protects consumers against false and misleading and deceptive business practices, and those will be outlined in the Act, and we'll go over those in just a moment. It also protects consumers against, uh, gives them a remedy uh, when th there is a breach of a warranty, either an express warranty or an implied warranty. And then it also protects consumers in the case of what we would call unconscionable actions or courses of action. And as I said before, it provides remedies for consumers that they would not otherwise have under the common law. And another neat thing about this is that consumers can't waive this. When they're given a contract, a sales or service contract, uh, the, the merchant can't slip in language that says, I, I waive the, uh, um, the, uh, my protections under this. I mean, they, it, not without some difficulty, requirements that it have to be bold, uh, they have to be represented by the lawyer to, uh, to, to sign that waiver away. Uh, it's it's uh, very difficult, and you're just not going to see consumers signing their rights away with the DTPA. All right, so what are the elements of being able to, uh, to file a lawsuit under the DTPA? First of all, the, the plaintiff has to be a consumer. That's someone that, that's seeking to, seeking to buy uh, or purchase goods or services. Secondly, the defendant has to be someone who can be sued under the DPA. More about that in just a minute. The defendant must have committed a wrongful act under the DTPA. And once again, here's that list again. False, misleading, deceptive business practices, uh, breach of an express or applied warranty, or uh, the unconscionable act or course of action. And then finally, we have the causation element that we see so frequently in, in other causes of action. Uh, defendant's action must be the producing cause of the uh, plaintiff's damages. Okay, what about the consumer? Consumer can be an individual. It can be uh, uh, an artificial person, like a partnership or a corporation. Consumer can also be the state of Texas or an agency of the state of Texas. Um, there will be a limit on uh, business consumers with, uh, with uh, I think right now it's $25 million or over in assets, and, and we're talking uh, the year now is uh, 2015, so you know, maybe that will change in the future. Uh, but uh, the definition of consumer is quite broad. And as I said before, a consumer is someone who is seeking to uh, acquire those goods or services. What about the defendant? Well, who can be sued here? They first have to be a person. Well, a person, once again, could either be a, a, a natural person, an individual, or an artificial person, a partnership, corporation, other business forms. Okay. Uh, a defendant has to be connected with the transaction in some way. They have to be the seller or the merchant or perhaps maybe the agents involved on, on that side of the uh, transaction. But then we got some folks that cannot be sued uh, under the T uh, Deceptive Trade Practices Act, such as professionals, someone who is using their professional judgment in rendering a, uh, a service, generally cannot be sued under the DTPA. Publishers are exempted from the DTPA. Medical providers are exempted from the DTPA, part of the professionals in rendering judgment, uh, professional judgment in, in delivering a service. V uh, veterinarians also would be another example. And then cities cannot be 
uh, sued under the DTPA. We need a wrongful act. It's one of the elements. And here's that list again. So you'll notice that there are three categories of wrongful acts. False, misleading, deceptive business practices. And in the DTPA, we have what is called a laundry list. Right now, it's about 27 items on that laundry list of things that that uh, if, if those particular things are done, then that's a violation uh, of, of the act that the, those are enumerated false and misleading uh, deceptive acts. And that the list is, is not uh, exclusive. It could be other things that aren't on the list, but, but 27 things are. I gave a few examples, such as passing off goods or services as those of someone else or causing confusion as to the affiliation or certification involved, uh, like saying something has the uh, good housekeeping seal of approval when, in fact, it may not. Um, or uh, representing goods as they are new or original when, in fact, they're used. I had a case like that. Um, advertising goods with intent not to sell them or with the intent not to provide a reasonable anticipated uh, demand uh, to meet that demand from the uh, customers, from the consumers. In, in other words, bait, what used to be called bait and switch. And then when you reset a car odometer and sell that car, you're, that's an decept, enumerated deceptive act. And like I said, the, these are uh, uh, five or so here and there's going to be a list of 27 of them. So on this laundry list, okay, and, and that and that's mainly where you're going to see most violations under the DTPA. But also, there you can also have a breach of a warranty. Now warranties come in two varieties. They're either express or they're implied. And express warranty is something that is uh, frequently in in writing and and uh, it's making certain promises about the uh, about the good or the service implied warranties are going to be unwritten unspoken but nevertheless you you would expect them to be there such as merchantability warranty of merchantability is saying that this particular uh, product uh, is what it what the label purports it to be and that it's fit for the for its usual purpose whatever that purpose is for that product or that or that service a fit for a particular purpose would be uh, the consumer goes into a store and says, I need a hardware store and says, I, I need paint to paint a metal door. I don't know anything about paints, but uh, I'm relying on you to help me pick one out. You know, show me which one would be suitable. And uh, they pick one out, and it, regardless of what the label says, if the representation is that well, this, this would suit your purpose. This is fit for your purpose. And in fact, it's not. Well, that might be a violation of a warranty f for fitness for a particular purpose. And then we have implied warranty for a uh, good and uh, workmanlike manner. And here we're saying that there's a warranty that uh, when you get a service from someone or, or buy a good from someone that, that uh, there was competence uh, by the provider of that service that uh, it was done in a workmanlike manner, uh, that there's a particular level of expertise that one would expect when you're buying that particular good or service. And then we have unconscionable act or course of action, and that's kind of a catch-all, but also uh, what is unconscionable? It, it's it's uh, extremely unfair, uh, outrageously unfair. Uh, there's usually a... Um, uh, unequal bargaining position and powers between the two parties that are involved. And so someone is taking advantage of the other in, in that uh, situation. And so that can rise to the level of being called unconscionable. And that's a violation of DTPA. Remedies. Now, these next two boards, this is the heart of it. Remedies. If you prove a violation that we just talked about on, on the previous board, prove a violation of DTPA, 
You can get your actual damages, whatever those happen to be. You can also, and here's where the real teeth are, you can get treble damages, three times the damages that the plaintiff suffers if that violation was either knowingly done or intentionally done by the merchant or, or the seller. And then, of course, there are some equitable remedies. A court can issue court orders, maybe for restitution uh, or maybe an injunction to order uh, the seller or the merchant to cease doing a particular uh, 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 act or deceptive act to keep them from doing it in the future. That may apply. You also get interest on your damages. Court costs, okay, so these aren't really surprising here, but this is also where the teeth come in. Attorney fees, because of common law, you generally cannot get attorney's fees on a uh, breach of contract or a breach of warranty type of, of action, unless you've got a statute. Here's our statute, DTPA. So you can get all of these remedies here under the DTPA. And then um, other information that you need to be aware of is that you, you just can't haul off and sue someone under the DP, DTPA. you got to give them 60 days notice, uh, usually uh, in a, a demand letter, uh, certified mail, return receipt requested, some sort of way to prove that they actually got the notice and that, uh, that you can send, uh, you can prove that you actually gave the notice. That's really the more important of the, of the matters, that you gave the notice. And then, of course, to tie into these remedies here under the DTPA, you've got a two-year statute of limitations. Now, that doesn't mean that, that uh, maybe under a straight breach of contract or something like that, it might have a, a longer statute of limitations, but to get these remedies here, you've got a two-year statute of limitations. And that, in a nutshell, is the Texas Deceptive Trade Practices Act.